Good morning, gents and ladies and everyone that watches ASFN Fishing. We thank you for your support. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell notification button to receive notifications each time we upload a video. And like the videos, it really helps us. Now. It's a real privilege to welcome one of our new supporters, Chint, the market leading electrical brand, distributed by CED. Consolidated Electrical Distributors in Joburg area and then in the Natal area, Alpha and Omega Investments headed up by Kumaran Ganesh, a salted and very keen angler. We thank you guys for the support. It's great having you on board. And uh, guys, these are the guys supporting us in bringing you as much content as possible and sharing as much as possible. So any electrical needs you have, have a good lookout for Chint. And guys, like I said, for any trade inquiries, KZN Eastern Cape area, contact Alpha and Omega Investments and have a chat to Kumaran. You can also have some fishing chat when talking to him. And then in the Joba Gauteng area, the CED, Consolidated Electrical Distributors. Guys, welcome and thank you for your support. <laughs> Early morning starts for quite a few bass anglers at Masinsi Resort, Albert Falls Dam. After lockdown, everyone couldn't wait for the tournaments to get going. Several tournaments are fished over South Africa. Some money tournaments, some amateur competitions, cars for cash FLW, to name but a few. And today we're taking our chance with a Joey's Tournament Trail. Fished in KZN, this is a money tournament and it's got some really good prizes. Only allowed 40 boats to enter due to the lockdown restrictions. Getting through the gate was quite the challenge. With all the lockdown, precautionary measures that has to be in place, which since he adhered to amicably. The tournament was held on a Saturday with a lot of social angles, also awaiting access to this fantastic dam. The news has been around. Some really big bass are coming out at Albert Falls. This time of the year during the spawn, it's all about weight. Getting some of those big lunkers, ranging between three and five kilos on a regular basis. A lot of the angus will pre-fish up until a week before. The previous Sunday evening at 12 o'clock is the cutoff, and none of the competitors are allowed to fish this venue from the Monday before the tournament. The five days before, the anglers plan and strategize, and those with the maps on the lower end's fish finders can pre-select or determine the spots they would like to fish or start at, combined with the information they gathered when they pre-fished. The peer competitiveness and camaraderie of fishing in teams has made these tournaments very popular. Now what was in our favor this morning is the very thick mist, because getting into the gate took extra long. A lot of us would have started late, and have a definite disadvantage from the angus that managed to get in before the launching time. The organizers of the tournament sought fit to delay the launch and the start of the tournament due to the thick mist, being unsafe for the boats to shoot out in different directions on the dam without proper visibility. This gave enough time for anglers to catch up a bit, have some chats and share some ideas. All part of what makes these tournaments so popular. It's uh, the Joey's Tournament Trail at Albert Falls on the 5th of September. And uh, we only allow two people on the boat, so we don't have the cameraman. So it's going to be much less footage morning. 
so happy to be with Rob on his boat this morning. He's got the good luck charm. Well, I hope so, but we're only going to catch three big stinking fish. Yeah. That's all we need. Yeah. And then just that last minute, we get an even bigger stinkier fish so we can cut the old one that's tired. That would be, that would be a win. Yeah. And if we get a big fish early, we'll go and get win the prize for the first big fish landed. Yeah. So we'll, we'll give it our best. Always a whole bunch of theories through the week. <laughs> <laughs> And working out little plans, and uh, only really when you're on the water, things come together, and or well, they don't. But uh, today they will. We'll make it happen today. But yeah, such a nice morning. Eh? The mist has delayed the launch, so we're gonna launch a bit later, but we're gonna fish a bit longer. We're already sure 15 minutes. 20 past seven. 15 minutes delay yeah. already, which is just so. as well because the backlog at the gate was huge. Yeah. No, there was a lot of. Uh, social anglers as well as 40 uh, boats for the tournament um, so yeah and I'm <laughs> I'm <laughs> recording back, the recording right back <laughs> at you I must just make, yeah it is recording uh, it's 40 boats around us here you can see the mist but a lovely morning and I believe it's going to be a very hot day 31 degrees predicted and uh, a 13 kilo bag three fish <laughs> In our dreams, maybe. I'll settle for nine. Yeah, nine will be good. Yeah. We'll make ten. <laughs> we'll see at the end of today we're going to have these long droopy faces, if not. But yeah, so we'll uh, document what we can, but fishing comes first. Thanks for joining us. Now this is not just a fishing show you're watching now and it's not just the coverage of the tournament it's a bit of everything but more importantly just the tranquility of the setting this perfect morning at Albert Falls Dam so bear with the long shots and the additional shots but there's no better way to capture and share with you guys the experience the environment and this beautiful venue holding such big bass. Now because of the tournament rules only allowing two people on a boat we did not take a cameraman with. After being delayed almost an hour and a half the mist cleared enough for the boats to launch safely. The launching works from a draw done electronically giving you a position in which you can launch. Your launch number and your team name gets called out in the chronological order of the launching numbers that was awarded electronically. Enough space is left between each boat. All the boats have to hold in the no-wake zone, which is normally indicated by a yellow buoy. Once passing the buoy, you can run at full taps and get to your spot before anyone else. Okay guys, the mist is starting to clear. You can see all the guys waiting in anticipation now. And uh, I think it actually calms the nerves a bit to wait like this, eh? Yeah, I'm calm. Chase, chase, chase. Very much so. Now the oaks actually all look very relaxed and calm. So, I think uh, maybe a good thing. You catch more fish when you're calm. Don't be tensed. That's true. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Now with the information gathered with pre-fishing and other people fishing the dam, prior to the cutoff, there was maybe two or three favorite spots everyone wanted to get to. And exactly that happened. A concentration of boats were found on especially two spots where more than 70% of the field was fishing, started fishing. Myself and Rob started off with a bit of a negative, hooking into a really good fish and losing it. But followed shortly after, with two quick fish early morning already. All measures are in place to make sure the safety of the fish comes first. The normal bag limit of five gets reduced to three during spawning season, as a lot of the fish can be bigger, requiring more oxygen from the live well and can have a negative impact on the fish should you have five big fishing. Another great incentive 
is prizes awarded for guys bringing in big fish early already. Should you get a really good fish of three, maybe four kilos or higher and bring it in immediately to the weigh station to be able to release it again, there are certain prizes awarded. And quickly there were some lunkers in excess of four kilos coming in. Several good catches came in throughout the day. Myself and Rob, after losing a really good fish, got rewarded with one fish just under three kilos and another just under two. Unfortunately, we didn't even make the three fish bag limit. And in hindsight, we do realize exactly what we did wrong, but didn't want to lose our spot as we had a nice position on one of the very popular spots, which held 14 boats, that's 28 anglers, concentrated on a small piece of water with a radius of about 50 meters. But fishing these comps are really enjoyable. All the preparation beforehand, the anticipation, the strategies that gets discussed and considered and then just with your eyes watching around you what the guys are doing. Martin de Kock was close to us and had really good success on certain methods he used and so did Brendan van Zadem on our other side. I stuck to my predetermined strategy which worked for me in the morning but didn't work for me throughout the rest of the day. It's important to change regularly and rather aim for the bag than just for the bigger fish. At the end of the day, certain teams came through with really good catches. Two fish of 4.2 kilos were caught, two fish in excess of four kilos were caught, several over three kilos and quite a few over two kilos, making it really good average fish that came to the way stations. The winning team, Joey's, Ryan Swat and Ryan Thompson, walked away with first prize with a total weight of 9.2 kilos for three fish. In second position, team Kevin Naidu and Tian Shush and their three fish totaling 9.209. In third position, team Sienekol, Andre Sienekol and Vian Sienekol weighing in three fish with a total weight of 8.802. First and second position was really close knit. And all in all, a really great day fishing with some really good lunker scored. Follow Joey's trail on Facebook as they have several competitions throughout the year. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you really enjoyed the drone footage, the atmosphere and the pure awesomeness of what we have in South Africa to enjoy. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification button to be notified each time we upload the video and please like the videos as this really helps us.